words. Y'all got time this morning. Y'all gonna help me through through here. We're we're just going to jaywalk over, amen, to Philippians chapter four. And just want to look at verse four. Philippians four and four. And I know somebody's there. We let the reader read just a little bit more because I didn't think it was fair just to read one verse, amen. But Philippians 4 and 4 is where we're going to hang our hat for, for this morning. Y'all all right? And, and the text says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Let me say that one more time. Re rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And I just simply want to tag this text. <laughs> Rejoice. Y'all in here with me? Uh, whenever there is a storm out on the Atlantic Ocean, a storm is a dangerous place to be unless you're underwater. If you're in a boat during a storm, the wind and water can leave you and your boat in a severe case of instability. Is there anybody in here? But if you're in a submarine, you're typically 50 feet underwater. And in the submarine, there is a place of peace and tranquility. There is no storm, ocean or sea, that is felt under water. All storms are only felt on the surface. That's really what peace is like. Deep down on the inside, there's peace while there's a storm on the surface. Is there anybody here who has a storm brewing on the surface but have some peace way down deep on the inside? But then there's somebody here who may have some storms brewing on the surface, but may not have any peace way down deep on the inside. And I'm hoping that after we close this message, you'll be able to say, yes, I, I have some storms on the surface, but I have some peace way down deep on the inside. I, I preach to myself if don't nobody else help me this morning because this text blessed my life. So if there's anybody here, that's really what Paul is talking about here. He's really talking about since we read the text, we might as well go ahead and preach the text. Y'all got time for this in here? Uh, 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 Paul, that's really Paul's thesis, joy and and rejoice are, are mentioned some 16 times in this little book. Yeah, yeah. The backdrop of this writing about joy is that he's writing about joy from, from jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said the backdrop of the text is that he's writing about joy from, from jail. He's in jail. Somebody that's locked up is writing to encourage somebody that's free. Let me talk to y'all over there. Y'all look a little funny over there. Somebody that's in jail is, is writing to some folk that's 
free. Ought to look like the folk that's free. Y'all gonna help me preach this. Ought to be writing to the folk that's in jail but about having some joy. Are y'all in here with me? But Paul is locked up in a Roman jail and he's writing this letter because he's trying to encourage this church here. One of the most positive letters throughout all of the New Testament. Matter of fact, throughout all of the canon of scripture. Let me help you understand what I'm saying. In other words, the folk that's in jail ought to be encouraging, uh, seem like the one that's free ought to be encouraging the one that's in jail. Y'all looking at me funny. Let me help me just land this home. In other words, there's some folk that got money who can't sleep at night. They're going to they're gonna make me work today. Jeff, uh, help me in here, Jesus. So, but then there's some of us like me who, 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 who just broke. Help me and snore all night long. Do you hear me? Because it's something about having some I'm, I'm saying that there is something about sleep that, that although although I might have money, I'm, I'm up all night, I'm tossing and turning, but then those who, who are broke, somebody in here, know that I may not have a dime in my pocket, but I can sleep real good. Is there anybody here with me in here? So, so notice now, Paul is preaching this message from a jail cell. Uh, and the word alone is a sermon all by itself. And so we're just going to stay right here with this word rejoice. And we're going to first, first, we're going to look at uh, this as a statement of salutation for those taking notes. Uh, the word rejoice, uh, in the Greek etymology, this word comes from two words uh, uh, that mean joy. Watch this. It's a noun. And a verb. The noun is kara, while the verb is kairo. Watch this. It's a greeting and a parting. Uh, that means that this word rejoice is a is a is a hello and a goodbye. It's a it's a it's a hello and a goodbye. In other words, in other words, rejoice is I'm, I'm happy from what I'm walking into and I'm saying and I'm happy while I'm saying goodbye to what I'm walking out of. Is there anybody here? I'm, I'm happy about walking out of 2019 and I'm happy about walking into 2020 because when I walked out of 2019, I had God. And while I'm in 2020, I, I got God. If I make it to 2021, I still have God. Is there anybody here with me? And so, and so this word here, it's a, it's a greeting and a parting. It's a hello and a goodbye. Uh, uh, it means that when I walk into something, I, I, I'm still happy. While I'm leaving something, I'm still happy. In the middle of my transition, I'm happy. So, so now, not only, not only is it a statement of salutation, but it's a statement of security. Paul says that I'm, he says that I'm rejoicing where? Uh, in the Lord. Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Because the Lord is the only one in my life that I have always. Somebody going to get this later. Uh, always is perpetual and it is invariable. That means perpetual means it's nonstop. Invariable means it does not change. So that means God is the only thing in my life that does not. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent and he's omnipresent. So that means that he is everywhere at every time. That he has all power in the palm of his hand. And so that means that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so since God does not change, that means that I, he's always, he's put, I, in other words, he, Paul says rejoice. 
in the Lord always. And so if there's nothing, is always but God. Watch this. So somebody said I'm, I'm divorced, but I still have God. I'm depressed, but I still have God. I've been laid off my job, but I still have God. I lost my house, but I still have God. I lost my car, but I still have God. I lost my land, but I still have God. Friends may have walked out on me, but I still have God. I, I read somewhere over in Matthew chapter 28, right about verse number 18, the text says, Go ye into all nations, teaching them to observe all things. He's baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'll be with you always. Is there anybody here? He said, now watch this. When I stepped out of 2019, he was with me. When I stepped into 2020, he was with me. Is there anybody here? There's never a time that God is not with me. There's never a time that God is not present. And so God was there. When nowhere became somewhere, and when it stepped out of nowhere and became somewhere, and when somewhere ends up in nowhere, he'll still be God, and he'll be God all by himself. And because he'll never cease being God, that means my joy should never, ever stop. Y'all going to catch me in just a minute. Y'all going to catch me here. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. When I'm in trouble, he's there. When I'm broke, he's there. If I'm in the hospital, he's there. Somebody going to catch me here in a minute. And then not only is he a statement, watch this, he's a statement of stability. He's a statement of stability. Paul was writing this church to tell them that, that just because you're a child of God does not excuse nor exempt you from life's challenges. Can I just send you this text? Uh, so if you missed the text, if you missed the tweet or the memo, let me just share that just because you're saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are not exempt from trials and tribulation. And just because you're a child of God does not mean that you won't get sick. Doesn't mean you won't have problems. Doesn't mean that you won't deal with hard-headed folk. Don't mean you won't deal with chaotic co-workers. Does not mean you won't deal with nosy neighbors. Don't, does not mean you'll deal with crazy church members. I wish I had some help in here, but I preach it all by myself. Watch this now. Rejoicing is the tool God gave us to look good in bad situations. In other words, if you want to keep folk out your business, just learn how to smile when, you, when you're catching hell. Learn how to smile when things aren't going well. You want to keep folk out your business. Can't you know, you know, you see folk at the church house and they're just giving God glory and you just wonder why they can shout. It seems like every week, how can they give God glory? You know it ain't that much praise in the world. That's because your praise is based on what's happening in your life. And their praise is simply because God is good. Is there anybody here? I need somebody who's sitting on your row that may look crazy. They might be in your business. And just in case they're in your business. Just ask them to excuse you while you give God some praise, while you give him some glory. Take a little time to rejoice and give him some praise because even though it's not going well, I'm not going to let you see me sweat. I'm not going to let you see me deal with the stuff I'm going through because what I'm going through is none of your business. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. I wish I had somebody here 
to help me work through this. Watch the text. It doesn't matter. Watch this. Watch this joy, happiness. If, if your happiness is based on what's happening, then if ain't nothing happening, then you ain't happy. Did y'all hear what I just said? If your happiness is based on what's happening, and if ain't nothing happening, then you ain't happy. Secondly, if your happiness is based on happening and what's happening and you ain't happy, then you just messed up. But watch the text. But if you got joy, then it just don't matter. So, 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 so when you got joy, folk can't tell if you're broke. They can't tell if you're divorced. They can't tell if you're going through it. If you got joy, somebody going to help me through here. I'm trying to help somebody. Watch this. Joy trumps happiness because joy tells life that you can happen, but you can't control me. Joy says life, you can, you can happen. In other words, life happens to all of us who believe. But the best of believers have made up in their mind that life is not going to control my Christianity. But my Christianity is going to control my life. The reason why you can't have, watch this now, the reason why you can have joy is because you can cause it. The, the reason that you can have joy, the reason that I can have joy, Smith, the reason that you can have joy is because you can cause it. Let me talk to some folk over here. I said the reason that you can have joy, Alexander, is because you can cause it. The French say that joy is what's happening. But then to, when you put the re on it, is what you cause. But when you rejoice, that means I can cause it to happen again. But the reason I can cause joy is because joy is a fruit of the spirit. I had some help in here. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. And so since I got joy from the Holy Spirit, and if the Holy Spirit is on the inside of me, as long as the Holy Spirit, help me, Jesus, is on the inside of me, then he's not going to let what's going on on the outside of me control what's happening on the inside of me is there anybody here who understands that joy is not something that i create listen listen joy i can i can make it happiness is a feeling that i get from the stuff that happens but joy is a fruit of the spirit that originates with god and so since I'm his child, then I have joy all the time. And I choose to have joy. No matter what I'm going through, I choose to have joy. And as long as I have, the only way you forfeit this joy is you got to kick God out. And if you're not powerful enough to take away God, then you cannot, you're not powerful enough to take away this joy. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here with me to help understand that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. And since it's on the inside, God will help me deal with whatever's on the... That's uh, And I remember uh -huh. as I close uh -huh. Uh -huh. that 
that there is a reason mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that Paul told us mm -hmm. to rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is a, is a title, not proper name. All right, all right. And he tells us that every, at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. <clears throat> Y'all in here with me? And when I think about the Lord, I think about somebody who has had some tough days. Who knows what it's like to deal with some hard-headed people who knows what it's like to be lied on. Is there anybody here who knows that there is a God who has dealt with everything that we deal with? But not only has he dealt with all the stuff that we deal with, he was lied on. He was then spit on. He was crucified. Is there anybody here with me? But not only that, but he hung one Friday for your sins and for mine. And they put him in a grave late one Friday evening. He stayed there in a borrowed tomb. Are y'all there with me? But I like the fact, not only did he stay there and he hung out all day Saturday, but he rose early one Sunday morning with all power in his hand but I'm glad that it got up because because he got up it shows me that the Lord knows how to get up from that which holds him down I wish I had somebody here and because our big brother got up he shows us how to come back from a fall I wish I had some help in here, but I just go ahead on and preach it like I feel it. I remember as a boy, y'all remember that I got a little toy. It was a little punching bag. Y'all remember? And uh, it was blown up with some air. It was a punching bag. I put my gloves on. I thought I was Mike Tyson. Y'all going to help me through here. And this punching bag, I... Hit it with everything I had. And it fall all the way back. And then it'll pop back up. Y'all in here with me? Hit it again. It'll fall all the way down. Then it'll pop back up. And I got a little upset because I was giving it the best that I had. And it wasn't doing anything to this punching bag. And I went in the room. I said, there, how come this punching bag keep popping back up? And I'm giving it the best I got. He said, because there's something on the inside. Is there anybody here? The reason that you can go through what you go through. The reason that you can have joy when there's hell going all on around you. The reason I can shout when it's all crazy around me. The reason I can go to work and there's folk talking about me all around me. I can sit up in here and don't nobody speak to me. I can go everywhere I go and hold my head up high. Not worried about who's my friend. And you don't have to like me. You don't have to speak to me. The reason I can do what it is that I do is because there's somebody on the inside and my joy that I have is not based on what you say or what you do the joy that I have has been given to me from God and so I made up my mind that I'm not going to be swayed by what other folks say or do but my joy comes from God and so my happiness is not dependent upon what man does my smile 
Don't care if you smile back. I'm a smile and keep on going. I'm a wave at you and keep on trucking. I'm a still have the spirit of God because my happiness, my rejoicing, and my joy is not depending on what other folk do or say because my joy comes from God. Is there anybody here who knows that your joy comes from God and when your joy comes from God man can't give you that man can't take it away so you can smile in the midst of your crying you can hold your head up baby and walk in this church and don't care who speak don't care who wave because you're a child of God and you have joy that can't nobody give you is there anybody here I feel like preaching now but I know that there is a God in heaven that gave me this joy and the joy I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away and I'm not going to allow anybody to steal my joy don't let anybody steal your joy because they didn't give it to you the joy that you have came from God oh, oh. The joy that we have comes from God and our circumstances and people and, and the stuff that we go through. Oftentimes, it chokes us and robs us of a smile. And that's what the devil wants. But we ought to be able to smile no matter what we're dealing with, no matter what we're going through because of the joy. That comes from God. And the reason we have joy is because it's a fruit of the Spirit. And because it's a fruit of the Spirit, it didn't originate with man. It can't originate with man. So I have joy. And it's, and it's not circumstantial. It's because of I'm smiling because he woke me this morning. I have joy because bank account may not be full, but I'm but I'm but I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I was hmm. if you're here this morning, if you're here, if you're here, if you're here, you've been misplacing joy with happiness. And 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 if what's happening ain't happening, then you're not happy. That's not joy. Because joy has nothing to do with what's happening. Happiness is what occurs on the outside. Joy originates on the inside. So if you're here this morning, if you're here, and you've been frustrated like I have from time to time, been upset, allowed things and stuff to frustrate me, then I took a look at the book and understood this from the, from the etymology of the word rejoice. Means that I'm, the only reason I'm happy going out and happy going in is because rejoice is always because God is the only thing that's always. Everything else is temporary. Everything else. This. So if you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, you can we can have joy all the time. Used to hear the old folks say we ought to be the happiest folk on the planet. Ought to be the joy. <laughs> Didn't understand it. I I get it now. I get it now. So the the devil's job is to keep us from under from understanding this. And practicing this by allowing the stuff that happens yeah, yeah. to frustrate us.